so hello everyone welcome to yourpedia education today we are here at iit ropal and i got an opportunity to interact with one inspire faculty fellow dr raghav so hello doctor so first hello. of all thanks a lot giving us time and to meet with us today thank you so can you start please introducing yourself okay so i am a dst inspire faculty at iit ropal in the electrical engineering department so i am doing uh, research as well as teaching here so i am right now teaching the basic electronics to the ug students btech uh, second year right great 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 so as you told you are here dst inspire faculty fellow yes right yes. most of the our viewers they are from the engineering background okay so they hardly might be knowing this term right so right, what right. is basically this fellowship scheme and who can avail it can you please little more okay. add so this dst inspire is from the department of science and technology from the government of india so this is basically for the young uh, phd and post docs so who want to do the uh, do the independent research in the reputed institute like iits and some other uh, research organizations so in this uh, kind of initiative uh, government of india gives you a research grant as well as uh, salary so you are not driving salary from the uh, institutes and uh, of course it it is for 5 years where you can demonstrate uh, some your innovative ideas in this kind of institutes plus uh, of course you can learn from the uh, regular faculties and uh, this is the main purpose of this is to promote the science and uh, uh, this technology culture in india so that people don't go outside i mean to uh, with their innovative ideas to to sustain that culture this is the program for uh, so the criteria is you should be below 32 your academic background and your research work should be very excellent uh, and there is a direct interview for this so after completing your phd you can apply for this if you have some uh, of course some uh, very good idea which you can do in uh, some of the institute around you so that's the whole idea of so this so you need to apply to the host institutions or to the dst portal so that is not mandatory so there are two kind of uh, applications one is you already decide which host institute you want to work with and second of course without a host institute you have some idea and you know actually there are several institute where you can implement this so for that purpose also you can uh, apply so typically the application are 50 50% i mean those who have host institute and those who have some ideas so both can apply basically okay so that's great dr raghav so here in iit ropal what is your specific research area where you are contributing okay so i am working on uh, two fields which are emerging one is the spintronics and second is the uh, quantum technology that's great that's great so see most of the our viewers are the students right right who are sitting at the verge where they are making transition from the btech to masters or to phd right so for them these terms are very new as these are these are the future technologies right right right, right. so can you add a little more introducing these term what basically spintronics is right. what basically quantum technology and why do we need to explore and study these technology at this stage okay uh, so i will start with the spintronics so we all know actually this electronic which is basically the movement of charges like in wires or in circuit so spintronics is alternative of the uh, electronics where instead of using the charge you use the spin which is a quantum mechanical property okay so i will not go into the details of this but uh, spins is basically uh, you have up spin and down spin and you can manipulate this uh, you can imagine like up and down spin are something like 0 and 1 Zero and one something you use in the digital electronics. Right, right, right. So we can manipulate this by very low power, which is not uh, the scenario with the uh, conventional electronics. And second thing, uh, of course, uh, because this electron presses around the nucleus of the atom. This is something you can imagine like Earth revolving around the sun. This pressure is very fast. Like Earth movement is very slow, but this pressure is very fast, and we can utilize this in the uh, ultra fast computing. So that is the future. Uh, if you want to use, so conventional electrons can go up to few gigahertz only. This technology can go up to terahertz also. So that's the future actually. The other thing which is quantum. So we all know about uh, right now. The government of India also has taken this uh, quantum initiative, right? So that quantum initiative is basically for the quantum computing and quantum technology. Right, right, right. So my work in this field is uh, to create some kind of quantum rectifiers. Right, right, right. So if you imagine these semiconductor chips, uh, this another mission which is semiconductor mission from the government. you think about semiconductor chip it has many components rectifier magnet maybe antenna and transistor and mosfet 
so you can imagine this spin tonic and this uh, quantum technology so they can replace some of the part of the semiconductor chips uh, with some uh, which require low power and which uh, could be very fast in comparison to the conventional electronics so that is something my uh, our motive which are working in the spin tonic and uh, the quantum technology that to create something which can be compatible and competing with the conventions and that's quite technology. impressive quite impressive see most of the time in today's time most of the student take their decision on the basis of the roi or the yes. job perspective what right, they will right, be right. getting after completing their masters right right if we see through that window vlsi mm. sitting at the top right right so if somebody is studying spin tonics and quantum technology right. so do you think as per your experience he will be equally eligible for the vlsi industry are these the demand of vlsi industry right uh, so just imagine if you think like 5 years before uh, so we were not having even uh, this fabric uh, fabrication industry in india right right right, right. right? so if i think about this uh, as i mentioned that this uh, uh, spin tonics and quantum technologies so they are going to replace some of the part of the semiconductor chips right. i am not saying that uh, these will be a complete chip by itself but they are going to replace something and in that case actually there will be two kind of uh, if you want to implement uh, this quantum and spin tonic technology we already know these are advantages right but the problem is we are not going to replace the semiconductor industry right, right. so what we will do we will uh, replace some component and we will fabricate this alongside the semiconductor right, right. now the point is like 5 years before i uh, told you that india uh, were not having this fabrication uh, industries so we were doing just the uh, design layout kind of uh, job so if you come and join this btech and mtech in vlsi the kind of jobs like uh, like 2 years or 3 years before you were having is design layout design you are working so. for like taiwan and some uh, internal right, companies right, 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 right. now we have fabrication industries so now you can think of this kind of instrument and you can think of how to integrate this advantages technologies with your uh, semiconductor chips right right so there will be two kind of jobs for this one of course your uh, design lay layout kind of uh, jobs will be there of course because you have to integrate this unique capabilities to the uh, conventional electronics second you have to try out the fabrication not for spin tonics not only for spin tonics quantum but also for the semiconductor right right true, true. so we will require in uh, coming uh, upcoming years we will require a workforce to work first for the design layout and second specifically for the fabrication of this and that's why i guess most of the institution in india including iisc they have started the post graduation courses in the quantum technology yes. and many are coming in the row right? right of course so okay so now can we talk about you know the bachelor student who are coming mm -hmm. from the computer science mechanical mm -hmm. electrical electronics right who all can cope up with these kind of research area like spintronics and right. uh, you know quantum technology is there any specific requirement if you see as a supervisor as a faculty okay so i would say these are still uh, multidisciplinary kind of uh, fields so like in spintronics and quantum uh, so what we are thinking finally about the computing and uh, which requires hardware as well as software so mm -hmm. i can think of somebody will do the uh, this software job somebody will do the fabrication job right, right. and somebody will design which uh, could include this uh, mechanical jobs right, also right, right, right. so of course this is multidisciplinary even the government initiative i would say semiconductor and quantum they will run in parallel and that will require a i mean the kind of expertise in different fields right, right. one person can like i am a fabrication guy right, right, right. so coding is something i am not very expert of right, right. so i will require as a supervisor that somebody from the computer science will help me to and finally for designing the whole chip i require somebody maybe from the mechanical right or uh, some kind of other electronic industries right, so right. Uh, of course this is a multidisciplinary job and we require the involvement of many many different uh, Uh, institutes as well as different uh, areas true 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 so in today's time in modern era there is a you know dilemma in the mind of the students mm -hmm. especially the aspiring researcher who want to you know foot forward on the path of phd right but they are worried that uh, is it like that if we do phd from india we are going to end up in academics only what is right. your perspective on this okay so 
I also used to uh, think like this when I was in PhD. Uh, so in the final year, I got the opportunity to work with a specific instrument, which is uh, e-beam lithography. Okay. That is something the uh, industry use for the fabrication of semiconductor chips. So that time, India started to grow this culture of fabrication. That time. Uh, so now that uh, culture, which is in the academics right now, that will come into industry also. Okay. Finally, this fabrication. So now the industry, so they want to make these chips. Uh, so if you remember during the COVID time, we had the, uh, I mean, some kind of, uh, we were limited with this semiconductor chip during that time. So that is something government took the initiative and now we want to fabricate the chips in India only. Right, right. We are already fabricating some iPhones, right? So that is some kind of initiative now taken by in, uh, uh, Indian government. And now I'm very confident that uh, many of these VLSI students from the BTEC and MTech, so they will join the fabrication industry. That is something to operate uh, very expensive tools to fabricate the devices and it requires a specific skill. Right. And I'm very hopeful that uh, will be very highly productive job. And of course, we will get a very good kind of offers. Right, right. This will come, of course, eventually this will come in five and 10 years, but uh, we have taken the initiative. And once we uh, develop this workforce, that will be very beneficial for the country. True, true. So what final message or advice you would like to convey to our viewers? especially those who will be joining PhD in right. this season or winter season or in the coming season, right? Right. So what are some key points they need to take a note so that they can, uh, you know, travel the journey right. with quite smooth mode? Okay. So first thing I would say, this is the exciting time for uh, people like me who are working with VLSI. Uh, second, of course, some people think that, okay, after BTEC and MTEC, we can get the jobs uh, like IT jobs or some other jobs. But if I specifically tell you about the fabrication industries or where you go do the real kind of fabrication work, this takes time. I mean, this skill has to be developed with some kind of research only. And that takes time like four or five years, which is the time of PhD. So I would like to request some of the guys actually who work with this, uh, I mean, BTEC, MTEC, VLA, scientifically or electronics or computer science even, they come forward and they took the, I mean, take uh, some kind of initiative to help the government, of course, to sustain this kind of uh, fabrication and fabrication industry typically. So this PhD is, of course, to train the workforce for that. Uh, it takes time, of course. Uh, I would not say it's like four years BTEC or two years. But of course, after completing your five years, you will be trained enough to operate this expensive machine. And you can definitely contribute uh, towards the productivity of uh, overall of our, I mean, your country. So that's the whole idea, of course, why this, I mean, uh, government has taken this initiative. And of course, this will be for a long time. Great. So that's the whole idea, of course. Great. So Dr. Agar, it seems there is a lot to look forward to, but sure. it's a wrap up time. Right. So I believe your insights uh, have been truly enlightening and uh, they Thank will you. inspire the young viewers especially, right? Right. Thanks a lot. Okay. Thank you.